Witness, you told the tribunal two days ago that you had soldiering in the blood. Is that right? Ja, das stimmt. Very good. And you said yesterday that you were here to represent the honor of the German soldier. Is that right? Das tue ich im hohen Maße. Yeah. Very good. Yes. And you put yourself forward as an honorable soldier. Das habe ich yes. vor dem Bewusstsein. And you, put, and you put yourself forward as a truthful man. Habe mich als einen you solchen know. Menschen hingestellt yes. und ich bin es auch. Very good. Because of the things you say you have been made to do in the last six or seven years, do you think your honor has become at all soiled? Meine Ehre ist sicherlich nicht beschwutzt worden, denn die habe ich persönlich Very gemacht. Good. Very good. Very good. You say your honor isn't soiled. Have you, during the last six or seven years, when causing to be said the things which you say you had to circulate, has your truthfulness remained at the same high standard? Can't you answer that question? I glaube, ich bin zu dumm für diese Frage. Very good. Then I'll, if, if you're too dumb, I won't, I won't persist in it. I'll go on. I'll leave the question and I'll go on. In 1935, you were Lieutenant Colonel at the head of the Home Defense Department of the, of the Wehrmacht, was that right? Absolut richtig. That's uh, Department L, Landesverteidigung, is that right? Jawohl, stimmt. And was Field Marshal von Blomberg your superior? Feldmarschall Blomberg war nicht mein Direktor, aber einer meiner Vorgesetzten. Did you work a good deal with Field Marshal von Blomberg? Ich bin auch verschiedentlich persönlich bei ihm beim Vortrag gewesen. Naturgemäß lang nicht so viel wie der Chef des Wehrmachtsamtes. Did you attend staff talks with him? Besprechungen im größeren Kreise bei Blomberg habe ich nicht miterlebt. Ich glaube selten, dass mehr da waren als der damalige General Keitel und ich und vielleicht noch ein oder ein anderer Amtschef. And, and would they be called staff talks? Nein, Stabsbesprechungen, die fanden beim Chef des Wehrmachtsamtes statt. Did you go to staff talks? Natürlich, da ich einem Stabe angehörte. Very good, I, I thought that. Now, will you please look at a document, C-139, US-53. Just look at the signature, will you? That's signed by 
Uh, Blomberg, is it now? Das ist von Blomberg unterschrieben, ja. I can't find it then, Doctor. Which bundle is it in? Didn't hear you didn't mark it at all. C139. Uh, now, that is dealing with Operation Shulung. Do you remember what Operation Shulung was? That's a reoccupation of the Rhineland, isn't it? Can't you answer me? Kann Ihnen antworten, sobald ich das gelesen habe. The question was whether you remembered. Defendant. Defendant. The question was whether you remembered what Operation Shulang was. It isn't necessary to read the document in order to answer that question. Das meiner Erinnerung nach, von der ich aber nicht weiß, ob sie nicht erst hier aus dem Aktenstudium von Nürnberg stammt, war der Begriff Schulung die Vorbereitung für die Besetzung der Rheinlinie nach Räumung der West Very good, I agree. rheinischen Gebiete im Falle französischer Sektion. Very good. Aber Dazu ist noch was zu sagen. That's, well, wait a moment. That is then dealing with the reoccupation of the Rhineland. Do you agree with that? Nein, das befasst sich nicht mit der Wiederbesetzung des Rheinlandes. Das ist absolut falsch. Sondern das bedeutet... Well, now, just, just let us look at this document together and see what it says. Now, first of all, it's dated the 2nd of May, 1935. For the operation, I'm reading it to you, if you follow it. For the oper and uh, might I make this point first? It, it's apparently so secret that it couldn't be entrusted to a stenographer, isn't it? The whole document is written in manuscript handwriting, isn't it? You can answer that question, surely. Can't you see whether it's in handwriting or not? It's in handschrift, geschrieben, yeah. Well, why not say so? Now then, just let's look at the document. It's from the Reich Minister of Defense. That's von Blomberg, isn't it? It's a second copy, by hand only. It's to the Chief of the High Command, the Chief of the Navy High Command, and the Reich Minister Ferrer. For the operation laid down, for the operation suggested in the last staff talks, that's why I asked you whether you went to staff talks, you see, of the armed forces, I lay down the code name Schulung. Then may I just refer briefly to the content. This is a joint undertaking of the three services. The operation must be executed. And this is a phrase we become familiar with later. By a surprise blow at lightning speed. Strictest secrecy is necessary. Only peacetime strength. Then number three, every improvement of our armaments will make possible a greater measure of preparedness. And then I ask the army, how many divisions ready for action? Not one token battalion, as you said yesterday. Reinforcement of the inadequate forces there, that's in the west, by the East Prussian divisions, which will be transported by rail or sea. High command of the Navy to look after the safe transport 
of the East Prussian troops. The red light was on, Malone. Don't, what could that refer to? That secret instruction. So secret it had to be in manuscript. If it wasn't, the reoccupation of the Rhineland. Wenn Sie mir eine ganz kurze Erklärung gestatten, dann wird die Zeit des Gerichtes ungeheuer well, please, abgekürzt. Please, witness, answer my question first, and then make an, an explanation after, if, if it is brief. The question is, what could it refer to, except the reoccupation of the Rhineland? Ich bin hier nicht als Hellseher. Ich kenne das Dokument nicht. Ich habe es nie gelesen. Ich war in dieser Zeit nicht im Wehrmachtsamt, das hat ganz andere Unterschriften, sondern ich war in der Operationsabteilung des Heeres und ich habe dieses Papier weder gesehen noch je davon gehört. Und wenn Sie das Datum betrachten, 2. Mai 35, dann liegt das dokumentarisch fest, denn ich bin erst Mitte Juni 35 in das Wehrmachtsamt gekommen. Ich kann also nur aufgrund meiner Generalstabsausbildung Ihnen einige Vermutungen sagen, aber Vermutungen wünscht ja das Gericht nicht. Very good, if that's your answer. And are you saying that you, who went to General uh, Field Marshal von Blomberg's staff talks, you can't help the court at all as to what that secret operation order is about? Es war doch vor meiner Zeit. Da war ich nicht bei Blomberg. Very good. Now will you look, please, at EC 405. Uh, now let him see in the German book. The German book. The German book, page 277. My Lord, that's page 267. Hasn't he got a German book? Uh, 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 defendant, uh, you did say, did you not, that uh, you remembered that the Operation Schulung was the preparation for the occupation of the Rhineland. Nein, das Gegenteil habe ich gesagt. Ich habe gesagt, das Wort Schulung habe ich zum ersten Mal hier im Gericht gehört und habe mir nun Gedanken gemacht, was könnte denn das gewesen sein? Und well, uh, the court will be able to judge as to what you said by the shorthand notes. say, do you, that you, uh, you did not say that Schulung meant the preparation for the occupation of the Rhineland, is that right? Ich will sagen, dass ich ja als damaliger Generalstabsoffizier der Operationsabteilung wissen musste, welche militärischen Vorbereitungen getroffen waren. Well, but that's, uh, that's, that's not what I asked you. What I want to know is what you said just now when you were asked whether you remembered what Operation Schulung meant. What did you say? It suggested that it may have come through wrongly to us in the translation. What did you say? Ich habe gesagt, ich glaube mich zu erinnern, aber ich weiß nicht, ob das nicht erst aus dem Studium der Dokumente hier stammt diese Erinnerung oder von früher, dass mit dem Wort der Schulung die Vorbereitungen gemeint waren, 
die die Räumung des westrheinischen Gebietes und eine Besetzung der Rheinlinie vorgesehen hat, im Falle französischer Sanktionen. Denn das war das Einzige, womit wir uns damals befasst haben. Dazu gehörten die ganzen Räumungsmaßnahmen, die ich dann später in dem Dokument EC 405 sowieso erwähnt habe. Well, now I, I, I want to refer, uh, you remember the date of that last document, 2nd of May 1935. Now I ref, ref, refer to EC 405, which is in the big document book 7, page 261, and it's on page 277 of the German book, 277. Now, this witness is a meeting. I want you to look, please, at pages 43 and 44 of the original which you have. Have you got 43 and 44? 43 and 44, jawohl. Very good. Well, now, you see there, it's a meeting of the Working Committee of the Reichs Defense Council. It's dated the, the, the 26th of June, 1935, and at letter F, Colonel Yodel talks about participation in mobilization preparation. And the first three paragraphs deal with general mobilization, and I don't want to read them, but the fourth paragraph, the demilitarized zone requires special treatment. In his speech of the 21st of May, 1935, and other utterances, the Führer has stated that the stipulations of Versailles and Locarno regarding the de demilitarized zone are being observed. To the aid memoir of the French Charge d'Affaires of the 17th of June, 1935, on recruiting offices in the demilitarized zone, the German Reich government has replied that neither civilian recruiting authority nor other offices in the zone have been entrusted with mobilization, such as raising, equipping, and arming of any kind of formations for the event of war, or in preparation, therefore. Now, if von Blomberg's handwritten letter of the 2nd of May, 1935, did refer to preparations for reoccupying the Rhineland by surprise, it was highly dishonest of the Führer, 19 days later, on the 21st of May, to say that the Locarno and Versailles was being observed, wasn't it? Nein, das war nicht unehrlich. Denn wenn es überhaupt richtig ist, dass sich der Begriff Schulung I think that's a matter of comment. Your if you please, if you please, if you please. I shall, of course, my lord, uh, have to make certain comments on the, the, the witness as I proceed. And no doubt your lordship will uh, uh, realize that I'm not endeavoring to depart from this particular ruling, which is only for this particular uh, question, presumably. I think the tribunal thinks that you oughtn't to make uh, comments and that you ought to confine yourself as far as possible to a cross-examination about the facts. Well, my lord, I, uh, I bow to your lordship's ruling. I've had, of course, a very extensive 
experience of cross-examination in many courts, and uh, I bow entirely to your Lordship's ruling, but it's very difficult for a cross-examiner to confine himself entirely to the facts, but I shall do the very best I can. Then I shall read on. Since political entanglements abroad must be avoided at present under all circumstances, only those preparatory measures that are urgently necessary may be carried out. The existence of such preparation must be kept in, strict, in strictest secrecy in the zone itself. And now I want to refer to the last paragraph. Commitment to writing of directive for mobilization purposes is permissible only so far as is absolutely necessary. Weapons, equipment, insignia, field grey uniform and other items stored for mobilization purposes must be kept from sight. You were collecting weapons and uniform in the demilitarized zone, were you? Give me that best though. Das waren Waffen und Ausrüstungsgegenstände der Landespolizei, der Schutzpolizei und der Gendarmerie. Truppen waren nicht dort, infolgedessen waren auch keine Waffen für sie dort. Did the, did the weapons, did the troop, uh, the police wear field grey uniform? Polizei? Hmm? hat meines Wissens eine grau-grüne Uniform getragen oder eine grüne Uniform. I suggest, then, what was the need of this great secrecy if this was only police equipment? Das war die Ausrüstung, außerdem noch für den verstärkten Grenzaufsichtsdienst, den Zollschutz, von dem ich schon gesagt habe, Das ist beabsichtigt. The answer, my question, witness, was what was the need for secrecy? What was the need for secrecy if you weren't breaking the Treaty of Versailles? Can't you answer that? Ich habe mich über die Notwendigkeit und die Gründe der Geheimhaltung all dieser Maßnahmen in meinem Zeugenaussage bereits eingehend geäußert. Und ich stelle fest, dass es in diesem ganzen Vorarbeiten sich darum handelte, im Falle einer Besetzung des westrheinischen Gebietes durch Frankreich am Rhein selbst mit Hilfe der Schutzpolizei, der Gendarmerie und des verstärkten Grenzaufsichtsdienstes eine Sperrlinie aufzubauen. Das war die damalige Absicht. Uh, Nur für diesen Fall, dass ich von der Rheinlandbesetzung erst acht Tage vorher oder sechs Tage vorher erfahren habe, habe ich unter Eid bereits ausgesagt. I know you have, you see, and I'm suggesting to you that your evidence was quite untrue on that point. And I'm going to suggest it's quite untrue on many points. Now then, will you please go back to the first paragraph that I read. You see, to the aid memoir of the French, the German Reich government has replied that neither civilian recruiting authorities nor other officers have been entrusted with mobilization tasks such as raising, equipping and arming of any kind of formations for the event of war. Doesn't that subsequent paragraph about the arm, the weapons, equipment, insignia and field, weapons, equipment, insignia and field gray uniform show that the truth was not told to the French charge d'affaires?
Was nicht? Ich wiederhole ja doch nur, was dem französischen Geschäftsträger erwidert worden ist. Und ich glaube, dass das im Wesentlichen auch richtig war. Keine Mobilmachungsaufgaben wie Aufstellung, Ausrüstung und Bewaffnung von Formationen für den Kriegsfall. Very good, thank you. you. Einen Krieg war überhaupt nicht gedacht mit keinem Wort und niemandem. Well, I submit it. I, I won't repeat the point. Um, may I just remind you, and I think there are copies for the tribunal, of Article 43 of the Versailles Treaty. Article 42 defines the area, the left bank of the Rhine, and the right bank to the west of a line drawn 15 kilometers to the east. Article 43, in the area defined above, the maintenance and the assembly of armed forces, either permanently or temporarily, as well as the upkeep of all permanent works for mobilization, are in the same way forbidden. I suggest to you the steps you were taking mentioning at that meeting was a clear breach of Versailles. Do you agree or don't you? Nein, dem stimme ich nicht zu, weil sie nur in den Fall getroffen worden waren, dass der Gegner den Vertrag nicht hält und uns wieder angreift, wie damals im Ruhrgebiet. Well, very good. Now, I propose to refer to your uh, a document which has been described as your speech, L172, from time to time. Uh, hand it to him, will you? And I want to make it quite clear first as to what you say the document is. Because you wouldn't say one thing one day and the opposite the next, would you, witness? Jawe. That uh, document has your writing in various places, has it not? I can refer you to the pages, if you like. If you look at page 40... Nein, unnötig. I beg your pardon? Unnötig. Hey, uh, viele, uh, viele handschriftliche Streichungen, Notizen von mir. Aber ich habe... Thank you, witness. Thank you for saving me that trouble. Then. And is that a speech, the notes of a speech, which you delivered at Munich to the Golighters in 1943. Ich habe schon gar gesagt, der Papierkorb davon, nicht die Rede, die ich gehalten habe, sondern ein Teile eines ersten Entwurfs und die Masse, was da drin ist, sind Vortragsnotizen meines Stabes, die sie mir für die Bearbeitung dieses Vortrages zugeschickt haben. Well, now, daraufhin habe ich ganze Seiten weggestrichen und den ganzen Papierkorb wieder zurückgeschickt. Und dann habe ich erst meine Rede gemacht. Well, now, I want to examine that, because you said quite differently, did you not, when you were interrogated by, two Amer by, by one American officer on two separate occasions. You said quite differently, did you not? Were you interrogated on this matter on the 8th of October last year by Colonel Thomas Hinkle? Do you remember that? Perhaps you wouldn't remember the date. Nein. Oh, wir haben ein paar Mal über diese Angelegenheit gesprochen. Yeah, and, and you were sworn when you, when you gave your answers uh, to the interrogator. Yeah. Well now, may I read, may I read to refresh your memory a copy from the shorthand notes of the interrogation. I show you a photostatic reproduction of a number of pages of a lecture 
which was purported to have been given by you on the 7th of November 1943, and ask if those pages represent the lecture that was delivered. For the record, that is identified as L... L... 172. Then you answer yes. A number of things are not contained therein, which I explained with the map. Question. You interpolated the remarks that do not appear in the written part. Is that correct? Answer. Yes. Many particulars I set forth just with the map at hand. Question, is that your handwriting appearing on the cover page? Answer, no, it is not mine. But the remaining sheets you identify as the written version of a lecture at Munich. Answer, I cannot say whether it was actually my lecture as it was, because I see the signature of Putleg. It isn't the, the lecture itself, that is the material of the brochures which had been furnished to me. Then do you identify, and just follow this, will you witness? Do you identify the first 29 pages as constituting the lecture that you delivered? Answer. After examining document, yes, that is my lecture. Do you want to alter that sworn answer now? Do you? Ich habe das Protokoll, das hier aufgenommen ist, ja nicht gelesen. Ich kenne auch die Übersetzung nicht. Ich habe noch mehrere diesbezügliche Erklärungen abgegeben. Ich habe gesagt, als ich in der zweiten Vernehmung festgestellt habe, dass das tatsächlich nicht mein Vortrag ist, dass ich zwar... I'll read you the second one too, witness. I had that for you. Uh, this document is identified. This was on the 16th. And, uh, had you finished what you wanted to say then? Nein, ich habe es nicht beendet. Ich bin well, what did you want to say? Ich wollte sagen, dass ich, bevor ich das ganze Dokument durchgesehen hatte, natürlich im ersten Moment des Eindruckes war, dass das mein Vortragsexemplar sei. Und erst bei genauerer Durchsicht im Laufe der Vernehmungen habe ich gemerkt, dass das nur die gesammelten Unterlagen für diesen Vortrag sind. Und ich habe klipp und klar erklärt, es enthält zwar einen ersten Entwurf, den Rahmen und den Schluss von mir, die ganze Mitte sind nur Unterlagen meines Stabes, Und das Ganze ist überhaupt nicht der Vortrag, den ich gehalten habe. Das habe ich wörtlich dem Oberst Hinkel gesagt. Yes, let me read now what I was going to read. The second interrogation. This is the 16th of November, 1945, four days before the trial. This document is identified for the record as L172. I show you the photostatic reproduction in order to refresh your recollection concerning it. As I remember your previous testimony, it was to the effect that the first part of the document is the speech that you wrote for delivery to that meeting. The second part consists of various thoughts on the basis of which this speech was prepared. Is that right? Answer. One moment, please. This is... This is not my real lecture. This is a conglomerate of the pieces of writing which are partly drafts of my own. That is the introduction, but all the appendices are the basis of my lecture 
furnished me by my staff. The photostats appended to the original lecture, it was a photographed copy. Also a number of maps which were drawn up included. This is not my lecture as such, and the annotations made here in this calligraphic manner were not mine. I made them in my own handwriting. I do not know the origin of this copy. Most likely, it was furnished me by the OKW for the purpose of giving this lecture. It is altogether a conglomerate of various pieces of writing, and it is usable only with limitations. However, and just listen to this, will you? As to the broad lines of it, this is what I have used as a lecture. Then the question is, I believe you stated that before, uh, I believe you stated before that the written speech that you had was not given as set forth in the text because you interpolated various remarks in the course of the speech, particularly whenever you refer to one of the maps that you placed before the audience in order to follow the campaigns which you discuss. Isn't that correct? Now listen to this. What I have written down, I have actually spoken, and I stick to this text written down by myself. But in regard to the momentary situation on the various fronts, and that's parts three and four, where you will find a note delivered extempore, I had that so clearly in my mind that I did not need to base my speech on any written statement. Also, I referred to the map freely. And the last question on this point, is it not true, however, that the document before you represents in general the speech that you gave at Munich in November 1943? And the answer is, yes, much without doubt is the same. All the appendices in regard to these various theatres of war and the other appendices I had not used during my speech, I returned them. Do you agree with your answers to that interrogation? Im Großen und Ganzen haben Sie ja bestätigt, was ich gesagt habe. Aber ich weiß nicht, warum man überhaupt so lange darüber reden muss. Der Fall ist doch vollkommen klar. Es ist... Well, please don't, don't worry yourself. Uh, I know I'm stopping you, but uh, I apprehend I'm stopping you say some, saying something quite irrelevant. And in the interests of time, I regard it as my duty to stop you. Please don't worry about why I should do something. I want to know whether that speech roughly represents what you, uh, that document roughly represents what you said in the speech. It is quite a different thing to being a waste paper basket. Die Einleitung und der Schluss. Wie er hier im ersten Entwurf vorhanden ist, ist natürlich in den Grundgedanken letzten Endes so gehalten worden. Aber der ganze Vortrag ist aufgrund dieses ersten Entwurfes erst endgültig bearbeitet, gekürzt, geändert, gestrichen, die falschen Dinge herausgenommen worden und dann kam erst der Hauptteil des Vortrages, für den hier nur Unterlagen da sind. Es gibt keinen Beweis und ich bin selbst nicht in der Lage, es zu sagen, ob ich auch nur einen Satz von denen, die hier stehen, tatsächlich Very so good. gesprochen habe, wie Very hier good. der I'll erste Entwurf that. lautet. I'll accept that. Wenn Sie mir mein tatsächliches Vortragsexemplar vorlegen, das erkenne ich an. That's all we can give you, witness, because that's all we found. Uh, I think we might as well adjourn now. Go to please. May please, please Tribune, I'm, I'm passing from that point. The witness, I think, said the, the document was the basis of his speech, and I accept that answer, and I pass to another point.
Uh, would you please give the witness his diary, 1780 PS. Uh, German, 113P. And it's page 133 in the large document book. Page 133. Uh, witness, I think you have seen this entry, and on its 5th of November, 1937, I'm dealing with. Hitler develops his ideas of future development, intentions, and conduct of policy. Page 133 of the large book. Yes, number seven. I'm sorry, I should have given it a number. 5th of November, 1937. Hitler develops his ideas of future development intentions and conduct of policy to the commanders in chief, the armed forces, etc. There's a divergence in the recording of his ideas as made by the chief of armed forces office and by commander in chief of the air force. No minutes were kept. The intention of L, does that mean your department, Landesverteidigung? Put ideas on paper. Does it... oh, please answer my question, witness. Es heißt das. Es heißt Absicht L. Das heißt Absicht der Abteilung Landesverteidigung, die Gedanken zu Papier bringen. Yes. Und den Wehrmachtsteilen übermitteln. Yes. Very good. Well, now the. The minute, the meeting that you were talking about was what we've called the Hosbeck Conference, was it not? Which is 386 PS. The tribunal are very familiar with it. You remember the, the conference, do you not? You've heard it read many times here. Yeah, but I was there. Ich war bei der Konferenz nicht dabei. Was hier verlesen worden ist, das erinnere ich mich. I know you weren't present, but presumably you, as head of the Home Defense Department, were told of what was said at the conference. Ich habe mich bereits darüber geäußert, dass die Mitteilung, die ich bekommen habe, in keiner Weise etwas Sensationelles war und es liegen ja die Weisungen für die Vorbereitungen nach dieser Zeit, die liegen dem Gericht ja schriftlich vor. Damit ist ja bewiesen, was wir damals vorbereitet und ausgearbeitet haben. Wir haben ja den Befehl vom 20. Mai, wir haben den Befehl vom 14. Juni, es liegt ja vor. Uh, defendant, you know, defendant, you were only asked whether you were told what happened at the conference. It wasn't necessary to make a long statement about that. You see, I try and put simple questions, and I'm asking for simple answers. The last thing I want to do is to interrupt you. Were you told that at that conference, Hitler said Germany's problem was a question of space? Nein. Nicht ein Wort. Were, were you told that Hitler said that the German question could only be solved by force? Nein. Were you told that Hitler said that the German rearmament was practically complete? Nein. And the last question I ask you, where you told that Hitler said the first aim in the event of war would be Austria and Czechoslovakia. Die Mitteilung über 
die aktivere Vorbereitung eines Aufmarsches gegen die Tschechoslowakei, das, glaube ich, war in den Ausführungen enthalten. Aber ich kann nur sagen, die Einzelheiten, die ich vom Weltmarschall Keitel bekommen habe, sind mir nicht mehr gegenwärtig. Ich weiß nur das eine, dass es keinerlei Überraschung oder Sensation für mich war, sondern nur kleine Korrekturen der bisher ausgegebenen Weisung notwendig wurden. Very good. Thank you. Now then, uh, you were not present at Ober Salzburg when Keitel was there with Schusnig in the following February, were you? Nein, da war ich nicht dann. But, but Keitel later told you what had happened. Er hat einen ganz kurzen Bemerkungen darüber gemacht, erzählungsweise, denn mich ging es weiter ja nichts an. So, did you, did you make that entry in your diary, it's the next entry to the one I was referring, page 133, book 7, it's the same page, and 11th of February 38, in the evening and on... 12th of February, K with Reichenau and Sperler at Ober Salzburg. Schusnig and Schmidt are again being put under heaviest political and military pressure. Did Keitel tell you then? Ja, Sie haben nur das Wort wieder eingefügt, das steht in meinem Tagebuch nicht. Diesen Eintrag habe ich persönlich gemacht. Und zwar deswegen, weil mir Keitel erzählt hat, beim Mittagessen hätten Reichenau und Sperle kriegerische Reden geführt, indem sie über die neue Aufrüstung Deutschlands erzählt haben. Sehr gut. Now, in uh, March, I think this is common ground, you sign or initial one or two orders for the Operation Otto. Jawohl. Die ist aber damals nicht Operation Otto, sondern für den Einmarsch in Österreich. Uh, Hitler, uh, when he heard that Schusnig was going to obtain the opinion of the people by a plebiscite, he decided to invade at once, did he not? Ja, so, so mir wurde erzählt, als er hörte, dass hier eine ein, äh, groteske Vergewaltigung der öffentlichen Meinung stattfinden sollte, durch den Trick einer Abstimmung, da sagte er, das dulde ich unter keinen Umständen. So wurde mir erzählt. He wouldn't tolerate public opinion being, being uh, ascertained. Nein, er würde nicht dulden, dass die öffentliche Meinung durch diesen Trick vergewaltigt wird. So wurde es mir erzählt. So the, so the armed forces of Germany then marched into Austria. That's right. Das ist richtig. Die Wehrmacht marschierte ein. And, Aust and Austria from that day received all the benefits of national socialism. Is that right? Das ist eine politische Frage. Es hätte jedenfalls vielleicht das glücklichste Land der Welt werden können. Ah, but I wasn't asking what it could have become. I'm asking what it received. It received the SS, the Gestapo, the concentration camp, the suppression of opponents and the persecution of Jews, didn't it? Das sind Fragen, mit denen ich mich nicht beschäftigt habe. Die Frage müssen Sie an die zuständigen Leute stellen. Es hat außerdem mich bekommen als Artilleriekommandeur und mich haben Sie geliebt. Das stelle ich nur fest. Very good. Very good. You say the people appeared pleased to see you. Die Leute, die unter meinem Befehl standen, 
Die waren glücklich über diesen Offizier. Das kann ich Ihnen sagen. They had to, they had to appear to be, whether they were or not, didn't they? Nein, das mussten sie nicht. Und sie brauchten jedenfalls, nachdem ich lange weg war, mir nicht noch begeisterte Briefe zu schreiben, die ich während des ganzen Krieges über bekommen habe von diesen Österreichern, denen mein Herz gehörte. There was one man who wasn't pleased to see you, wasn't there? Ich kenne keinen solchen Mann. Hmm? Don't you? Nein. What about Schusny? Schuschnick habe ich nie gesehen, der kennt mich nicht, ich kenne ihn nicht, weiß nicht. But he wasn't pleased to see you come in, was he? Das kann ich nicht sagen. What happened to him? What happened to him? If your Lordship... My Lord, I, I quite realize that, my Lord. I can't imagine my question is not admissible, but, uh, Lord, if you don't want, want me to put it as one of a series of questions, I won't. Schusnig was put in a concentration camp, wasn't he? Is that right? Mir wurde erzählt, der Führer hätte entschieden, ich will unter keinen Umständen einen Märtyrer, aber ich kann ihn auch nicht freilassen, ich muss ihn in Ehrenhaft nehmen. Und in dieser Vorstellung lebte ich während des ganzen Krieges. Honorary custom. Ehrenhaft wurde genannt. Honorary What was he, an honorary member of Dachau? Das weiß ich nicht. Das sind keine Fragen, die Sie an mich stellen können, weil ich Soldat war und nicht Inhaber eines Konzentrationslagers. That's, a, that's an honor that one would be glad to dispense with, isn't it? Ich würde auf vieles gerne verzichten, was in diesen Jahren passiert ist. Bitte, ich muss protestieren gegen derartige Fragen. Rein politische, rein auf Rechtsfragen gerichtete Fragen und Dinge, die der, der Zeuge überhaupt nicht beantworten kann aus eigenem Wissen. Das ist keine Tatsache, ob sich der Herr Schuschnigg wohlgefühlt hat. My Lord, in my respectful submission, these questions are perfectly proper. They are questions the like of which have been put by every council who has cross-examined both for the prosecution and the defense. Uh, Mr. Roberts, the tribunal thinks the cross-examination is proper. It's Lord, you please. Lord, I'm passing from that point. I'm grateful to your Lord. And the only question that I ask in conclusion is that Schusnig was kept in prison or kept in confinement for several years without any charge and any trial. That's right, isn't it? Das kann so sein, ich weiß es nicht. You knew, did you not, when you signed those orders for the march into Austria, that Germany had given an assurance in May 1935 to Austria, and that on the 11th of July 1936, there had been entered into by your government and the Austrian government an agreement by Germany to recognize the full sovereignty of the federal state of Austria? Did you know of those things? Das wusste ich in diesem Augenblick nicht, ging mich als Oberst im Generalstab auch gar nichts an. Wo käme man dahin? Is there an entry? I'm passing now from Austria with this one last question. Is there an entry in your... No, it's a passage in the L172, the draft of your speech, or the basis for your speech, that after the Anschluss, Czechoslovakia 
was enclosed by pincers and was bound to fall a victim. Oh, Lord, that's page 290 of Book 7. Do you remember that passage? In dem ersten Entwurf, den ich für meine Gauleiterrede machte, da steht genau drin, welche strategischen Verbesserungen durch die einzelnen politischen Aktionen des Führers eingetreten sind, rückblickend. Aber nur diese strategischen Folgerungen. Well, but uh, again, I don't want to stop you, but did you say that something to this effect, I'll give you the, the document if you like, that Czechoslovakia was enclosed by pincers and was bound to fall a victim. In dem ersten Entwurf habe ich niedergeschrieben, dass durch die Einnahme, durch die, den Anschluss Österreichs, die strategische Lage der Tschechoslowakei so aussichtslos geworden war, dadurch, dass sie einem Zangenangriff zum Opfer, dass sie jederzeit einem Zangenangriff zum Opfer fallen musste. Ein strategischer Rückblick über Tatsachen. Unbestreitbare Tatsachen. I accept that, witness. Now may I go very shortly to Czechoslovakia, uh, to, yes, to the case of Czechoslovakia. I only want to deal really with a couple of documents. I want to deal with item 17, which uh, the tribunal will find on page 29 of book number seven. And it is marked, if you'll hand it up. I flagged that uh, for your witness, item 17. You're familiar with that? Das kenne ich, jawohl. And I, and I don't propose to read it again because it has been read very recently. But you agree, do you not? You said yesterday the problem was this. First of all, you must have a surprise attack. If you were going to attack at all, you must have a surprise attack. Aufgrund der Forderungen, die der Führer gestellt hat, ja. Yeah, you must have a surprise attack first. And your troops would take four days to get into their battle position. And therefore you must know the time, uh, the incident which is going to be the cause of the attack, you must know the time when the incident is going to take place. Ja, ich sagte, man muss entweder yes, den yes. Zeitpunkt voraus bestimmen oder man muss ihn vorher wissen. Yeah. Sonst sind die Forderungen nicht erfüllbar. And uh, therefore you must create the, in the incident yourself. Ich habe darüber gestern eingehende Ausführungen gemacht. Entweder musste man einen der vielen know, but, but ausnützen oder man musste vielleicht etwas nachhelfen. Aber wie gesagt, das sind ja alles Generalstabsüberlegungen. Yeah die Sie bei der, wenn wir Sie bei den Franzosen erbeuten, als völlig unerheblich bezeichnen. So you, you, uh, it's set down in the, at the end of the document on page 30, that either the Wehrmacht or the counterintelligence section would be charged with the manufacture of the incident. The last paragraph. Ja, ich schrieb dahin, sofern nicht ohnehin die Abwehrabteilung mit der Organisation des Zwischenfalls beauftragt wird. Sofern. Yeah. 
Yeah. Aber es sind alles theoretische Generalstabsüberlegungen in einer Situation, die ich gestern ganz genau geschildert habe, wo es jeden Tag solche Zwischenfälle bereits I know. gab. I know. And uh, then the world, if this had taken place, the, would, the world would have been told that because of that incident, Germany had been compelled to go to war. Ich glaube nicht, dass das der Welt mitgeteilt worden wäre, sondern es wäre ja mit, der wahre Grund mitgeteilt worden, der im Übrigen unaufhörlich durch die Presse mitgeteilt worden ist, dass man nicht dreieinhalb Millionen Deutsche einem anderen Volk versklaven kann auf die Dauer. Darum handelt es sich. What's, what's the good, if the world are going to be told the truth, what's the earthly good of manufacturing an incident? Das habe ich gestern schon, ich kann nur dasselbe wiederholen, was ich gestern eingehend sagte. Ich war ein zu guter Kenner der Kriegsgeschichte, um nicht zu wissen, dass das in jedem Krieg so passiert, bei der Frage um den ersten Schuss. Und erste Schüsse hatte die Tschechei um diese Zeit schon Tausende abgegeben, die auf deutsches Gebiet gefallen sind. Well, now I say, witness subject to correction, that you are not answering the question at all. And the question was a very short one, and you make a long speech about something quite different. The question was, if the truth was sufficient to justify your going to war, why do you want to manufacture an incident? If you can't answer it, say so. Es ist ja gar nicht feststehen, dass ich einen solchen Zwischenfall hervorrufen wollte. Ich habe geschrieben, sofern nicht. Es ist nie einer vorbereitet worden, das ist doch das Wesentliche. I'm not going to argue any further with you. I put my point and I'm going to leave it. But now I want to, on quite another point, to refer to the last page The last paragraph on page 29, the same document. Even a warning of the diplomatic representatives in Prague is impossible before the first air attack. Although the consequences could be very grave in the event of their becoming victims of such an attack. E.G., perhaps you'll read that paragraph, and I'll just complete reading to the tribunal. E.G., death of representatives of friendly or confirmed neutral powers. That means an air raid before there has been any declaration of warning, uh, declaration of war, or any warning to the civilian population. Doesn't it? Das bedeutet, dass ich den Führer durch dieses Schreiben darauf aufmerksam mache, dass aufgrund seines Befehls solche Folgen eintreten können oder eintreten werden. Would you call, would you call that a terror attack? A terror attack? Das kann man nicht sagen, unter welchen Voraussetzungen eine solche Aktion überhaupt sich würde auslösen lassen. Das sind ja alles theoretische Arbeiten für unseren Generalstab. Wie das und ob das in die Praxis übersetzt würde, das weiß ja kein Mensch, ob mit Recht oder Unrecht. Das oblag der politischen I'll Entscheidung. You, I'll show you later, I'll show you later how those thoughts were carried into practice in the case of other countries. So we leave that document altogether now. And I'll leave the case of Czechoslovakia. Now you were recalled 
to the OKW on the 23rd of August, 1939, from your artillery employment. We know that, don't we? Yeah, what? That was a great compliment to the opinion that the Fuhrer had of you, wasn't it? Der Führer hat die Rückberufung nicht gemacht. Ich weiß gar nicht, ob er es überhaupt gewusst hat. Ich glaube es nicht. Very good. Very good. Uh, uh, on a very small point, witness, you told the court uh, yesterday or the day before that you never had a conference with the Führer, I think, until September 1939. But your diary on the 10th of August 1938 it's page, it's page uh, 136 of Book 7. Your diary said you attended a conference at the Berghof with the Army Chiefs and the Air Force groups. Didn't you meet the Führer then? Das, was Sie behauptet haben, in Ihrem ersten Satz, das habe ich nicht gesagt. Sondern ich habe gesagt, wörtlich, ich wurde am 3. September dem Führer von dem Feldmarschall Keitel vorgestellt. Jedenfalls habe ich bei dieser Gelegenheit das erste Wort mit ihm gesprochen. So habe ich gestern wörtlich ausgesagt. Gesehen habe ich den Führer vorher dutzend Male und gehört in großen Reden auch. Very good, uh, witness. I, I accept that. It's quite, quite likely that I was wrong. Now, with regard to the Polish campaign, did I hear you were right when you said that Warsaw was only bombed after leaflets had been dropped? Das trifft für den Zeitpunkt der Belagerung Warschaus zu. Also der Terrorangriff, möchte ich sagen, der die gesamte Stadt treffen musste durch die Artilleriebeschießung, der fand erst nach dieser zweimaligen Vorwarnung statt. But history, it's a matter of history, is it not, that Warsaw was bombed with many other Polish towns in the early hours of the 1st of September, 1939, before any declaration of war. Isn't that a matter of history? Über diese historische Tatsache hat sich eingehend der Feldmarschall Kesselring hier, der es sehr genau weiß, geäußert. Er hat gesagt, unter Reichsmarschall Göring, dass an diesem Tage Yes. Die militärischen Objekte, wichtigen Objekte ganz Polens angegriffen wurden, aber nicht die Bevölkerung von Warschau. Very good. Uh, Kesselrig, you're quite right, and if the tribunal wants the reference, he gave evidence as to the bombing of Warsaw. The English transcript, page 5731. Now, I suppose the result of the Polish campaign was naturally a source of satisfaction to all of you. Give me that letter, will you? Der militärische Verlauf des Polenfeldzuges hat uns militärisch betrachtet außerordentlich befriedigt. Aber es gibt natürlich Dinge im Leben, über die man noch größere Genugtuung empfindet, wie über eine kriegerische Handlung. Well, now I want you to look at a letter. This is D... What's the next GB number? This is, my lord, is a new exhibit. D for Donald, 885. And it's GB 484. Uh, that letter's in your writing, is it not? Is it in your writing? Yeah. Very good. Now, is it written to...
Vice President, Dr. Karl Schwabe, Schwaber at Brunn, Moravia, Vice Presidency. Dated October the 28th, is it? My dear Police President, for your enthusiastic letter, I thank you heartily. I was quite particularly pleased. The wonderful campaign in Poland was a grand opening for the hard and decisive struggle. It brought about an unusually favorable point of departure, politically as well as militarily. The most difficult part for the people, as well as the army, is still ahead. I propose to read it without comments and comment afterwards. But the Führer and his associates are full of the greatest confidence, for the sanctimonious British will not succeed in throttling our economy, and militarily we are without worry. Decisive is the will of the people to stick it out, and this the many strong-willed and devoted men who are today at the head of the districts and in other responsible posts will take care of. This time, we will show that we have better nerves and the greater unity. That you, please, President, will contribute your weighty share to keeping the checks at it and not letting them perk up. Of this, I am convinced. Then I was very pleased about the high recognition granted to the troops. Thank you once more heartily for your words of appreciation, which exceed my modest contribution in the shadow of the powerful personality of our Führer. I am with a Heil Hitler. Why did you call the British sanctimonious? Because they keep treaties and don't have concentration camps and don't persecute Jews. Is that why you thought we were sanctimonious? Because we don't break treaties? Nein, das war nicht der Grund, sondern der Grund war, dass die allgemeinen politischen Verhältnisse damals so dargestellt waren und dass ich damals tatsächlich der Überzeugung war. Very good. Now, now you deal with decisive is the will of the people to stick it out. And this, the many strong-willed and devoted men who are at the head of districts and other responsible posts will take care of. Uh, who are these strong-willed and devoted men? Is that the SS and the Gestapo? Nein, das sind die Gauleiter. Gauleiter? Ja. Well, but I mean, we've got one or two Gauleiters here. I mean, Gauleiter Saukel, for instance, in a large area like Thuringia, he couldn't do much by himself, could he? He'd have to have some SS or Gestapo, wouldn't he? Darum dreht es sich hier gar nicht. Die Tatsache ist, dass diese Gauleiter die Organisation des Staates und der Verwaltung tatsächlich in diesem Krieg in einer bewundernswerten Weise geführt haben. Das Volk ist viel besser versorgt werden worden, trotz der Katastrophen wie im Jahre 1418. Das ist unbestritten wahr. Und ist ein Verdienst dieser Leute. They were much better taken care of. Es sind selbst in den letzten furchtbarsten Zustände hat jeder Mann in, Ver in Berlin noch seine normale Verpflegung bekommen. Es war ein Muster der Organisation. Das kann ich nur feststellen. And uh, a model of organization, because no opposition to the government or the party was allowed, was it? Gewiss, das hat es auf der einen Seite erleichtert, hat auf der anderen Seite aber auch zu furchtbaren Katastrophen geführt, die ich allerdings erst hier erfahren habe. Very good, well, the letter speaks for itself and I'll go along. May I just ask you about this last sentence, that you, please, President, will contribute your weighty share to keeping the checks at it and not letting them perk up. What did you mean by that? Nachdem er Polizeipräsident in Brünn war, war es ja seine Aufgabe, in Brünn für Ruhe und Ordnung zu sorgen und nicht im Rücken einen tschechischen Aufstand 
zu dulden, während wir im Kampfe stehen. Das ist selbstverständlich. Ich habe nicht gesagt, dass er die Tschechen umbringen soll oder germanisieren. Aber in Ruhe halten muss das. Very good. I pass from that now. And I want to go to the various campaigns on the West. Now, with regard to Norway, of course you knew that your country had given its solemn word repeatedly to respect the integrity of Norway and Denmark, did you not? Ich habe gestern schon von den beiden Erklärungen vom zweiten well, but please answer my question, it's such a simple one. one. Ja, die waren wir damals, glaube ich, in Erinnerung. Ich glaube, bestimmt. Very good. And we know the last, we know there was a, uh, an assurance at the beginning of the war to, to reassure all these Western neutrals. And there was another assurance on the 6th of October. And you say that in November, Hitler decided to invade Denmark and Norway. Ja, darüber habe ich mich yeah, gestern ganz good. eingehend geäußert. I know you did. Please don't always add that. I've got to ask you go over the same ground from the other angle, you see. Norway, as your speech said, and I'm quoting from page 291 of book seven, perhaps you better give him his speech, and it's uh, on page 11 of your notes. It's in the middle, my lord, under paragraph, my lord's under paragraph eight. In the meantime, we were confronted by a problem, the occupation of Norway and Denmark. In the first place, there was danger that England would seize Scandinavia and thereby, besides affecting a strategic encirclement from the north, would stop the import of iron and nickel, which of such importance to us for war purposes. Secondly, it was realization of our own maritime necessities. Note vendikaiten, that's the word, isn't it? Note vendikaiten, which made, well, Lord, that ought to be necessary, I think, and not imperative. Air fordatern is the German word, which made necessary for us to secure free access to the Atlantic by a number of air and naval support points. You wanted air bases and U-boat bases, didn't you? Die waren militärisch für uns außerordentlich wertvoll. Darüber ist kein Zweifel. Aber die Voraussetzung, sie zu nehmen, waren die Nachrichten, die wir hatten über die Gefährdung Norwegens. What I suggest to you, you see, is this: that this, like the case of the other three low countries, in this case, you simply made an excuse. You thought England might do something although she hadn't done it for months, and you breached Norway's neutrality at your own chosen time. Is that right? Um das mit Ja oder Nein zu, zu beantworten, müsste man eine ganz gründliche historische Studium 
aller Dokumente vornehmen, der eigenen und der Gegenseite, dann kann man sagen, ob das richtig ist oder nicht. Bevor das nicht entschieden ist, gibt es nur die subjektive Auffassung. Meine ist die und ihre ist die andere. Yes, and I point out to you that it was Germany on every occasion who violated the neutrality. The other country, the, the Allies did not. Im Falle Norwegen hat es das erste Mal die Engländer gemacht mit dem Fall Altmark. Durch das Minenlegen und durch das Beschießen deutscher Schiffe in den norwegischen Hoheitsgewässern, das ist einwandfrei festgestellt. Darüber gibt es keinen Zweifel. The Altmark, as you very well know, witness, was not an occupation at all. It was merely the act of the British Navy in taking British prisoners from a German prison ship. And I imagine your Navy would have done the same if they'd had the chance. What's the good of talking about the Altmark? It wasn't an occupation at all. Aber es war ein Völkerrechtsbruch gegenüber den norwegischen Hoheitsrechten. Sie durften nur in Norwegen ersuchen, dass Norwegen das tut. Sie durften selbst in den norwegischen Hoheitsgewässern keine Kampfhandlung durchführen. Dazu kenne ich diese Bestimmungen zu genau. What? Why should you, why should you break your word to Norway and cause untold suffering and misery to the inhabitants of that country because the British went into territorial waters and took out a few hundred prisoners? What's the logic of it? Why should the Norwegians suffer for it? Sie haben auch nur einen kleinen Nagel von diesem ungeheuren plastischen Bild der bevorstehenden Besetzung Englands herausgezogen. Es gibt aber hunderte solche. It's the, example, it's the example you quoted, witness, not I. I didn't quote it. Ich kann nur sagen, wir standen unter dem sicheren subjektiven Eindruck, dass wir in letzter Sekunde ein Unternehmen durchgeführt haben, zu dem die englischen Truppen bereits eingeschifft waren. Wenn Sie mir beweisen, dass das nicht wahr ist, wäre ich ungeheuer dankbar. Well now, I'm going to call your attention to the only outside evidence that you've produced about that, because it was read rather hurriedly, quite rightly, uh, yesterday. My Lord, it's in Yodel's document book two. And it's page 176. Well, it, my lord, it begins at uh, page 174. My lord, page 100, that's on the left-hand top corner. Page 174 says that Albrecht Saltman was an expert specialist, that he ev evaluated files from the British landing brigades, and that he examined diaries, that's on the second page, and the bottom of page 175, the documents and statements by prisoners showed that a short time before our invasion of Norway, British invasion troops had been embarked on destroyer. On the following day, they were again disembarked, and remained in the vicinity of the port of embarkation. They were then re-embarked after the German invasion of Norway for the second time and transported to Norway. <coughs> what intentions the English pursued in the embarkation of their troops before our landings could not be determined from the documents and from the prisoners, statements of prisoners. Whether they intended to occupy Norway before our invasion could only be conjectured because the prisoners didn't make any exact statements in that respect. The 
conjectures are based on the special equipment of the equipment of these British troops. In so far as I could evaluate the documents, they didn't contain proof of the English plans with regard to Norway. Have not the results, this is the next question, of all documents and statements furnished by prisoners been to the effect that in the invasion of Norway we arrived only just to the head of the English? Answer, yes, the information in the documents and statements could be interpreted to mean that in our invasion we were just ahead of the English. However, whether this was considered unmistakable evidence escapes my knowledge. And then they deal with the railway document, the French documents, but the witness doesn't know anything about them. That's pretty poor evidence, isn't it? On which Norway are to be suddenly invaded, contrary to all the treaties and all the assurances? Da stimme ich Ihnen vollkommen zu, da haben Sie recht. Aber das kommt nur daher, dass dieser Soldmann leider nicht der Spezialist für diese Dinge war. Er war nicht einmal Generalstabsoffizier. Und das hatte ich vergessen. Wir haben weitere, ganz andere Beweise gehabt. Und sie waren selbst vor mir auf dem Schreibtisch gelegen. Nämlich die ganzen Brigaden der englischen, der Befehle der englischen Landungsbrigade. Die haben die Vermutung endgültig und definitiv bestätigt. An invasion without any warning or any declaration of war. Das ist eine politische Frage. That, but you have told the court yesterday what a stickler you were about international law. How keen you were to see international law was observed. You knew that was against international law, didn't you? Diese Dinge standen nicht in unseren Vorschriften, sondern nur die Vereinbarungen, die für die Wehrmacht galten. Der Begriff Angriffskriege oder nicht, der stand in keiner Vorschrift, sondern nur die Hager Landkriegsordnung und die Genfer Konvention. Das war das für uns Zuständige. I mean, if an, honor, if an honorable German gives his word, he keeps it, doesn't he? He doesn't break his word without saying that he's going to depart from it, does he? An honorable German? That's an allgemeine, übliche Erscheinung auf der Welt. Auf dem Gebiet der menschlichen Zusammenarbeit. Nicht auf dem Gebiet der Politik. But if that is your code of honor, why is it not grossly dishonorable for Germany to break her word over and over and over again? Or would you rather not answer that question? Nein, das müssten Sie besser an die Verantwortlichen für die Politik Deutschlands verantwortlichen Männer richten, diese Frage. Very well, very well. I'll leave that. Now I want to come to the invasion of Holland, Belgium, uh, the Netherlands, I beg, I beg uh, pardon, the Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg. You have no doubt at all, have you, on the documents, that in the event of war in the West, it was always Hitler's intention to violate the neutrality of those three small countries. Er hatte vom Beginn seiner Befehle zum Angriff im Westen an schon die Absicht, durch Belgien zu gehen, hat aber bezüglich Holland noch sehr lange Zeit Vorbehalte gemacht, die erst später, ich glaube Mitte November, aufgehoben wurden. Also bezüglich Holland lagen die Absichten nicht fest. Bezüglich Belgien waren sie ziemlich früh in dieser Richtung, etwa schon Mitte Oktober, oder Anfang Oktober. 
You couldn't, of course. I mean, uh, Germany naturally wanted to wage an offensive war and an offensive war in somebody else's country. That's the ambition, naturally, isn't it? Deutsche Ziel war in diesem Kriege zu siegen. Damals. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't attack in the West unless you attacked through Belgium, could you? Jedenfalls war jeder andere Angriff ungeheuer erschwert und höchst fragwürdig. Das habe ich schon gesagt. Yeah, yeah. That's why, of course, France built the Maginot Line, so that you couldn't attack her frontally. Well, now, if you secured the coast of Belgium and Holland, you secured air bases from which you could annihilate England or Great Britain. That's what you hoped, wasn't it? Kein Zweifel, dass durch Besitznahme der Küste die strategische Lage Deutschlands im Kampfe gegen England sehr verbessert wurde. Das ist richtig. Yes. May I just, may I just remind you of a few documents which the tribunal know already. I don't intend to read them. I, I don't intend to read them. But the first document in order of date is 375 PS, US 84 dated 25th of August, 1938. It's during the Fall-Grün time. And that was the Air Force appreciation, which in the last paragraph of the whole document, that's page nine, I think, says Belgium and the Netherlands in German hands would represent an extraordinary advantage in the air war against Great Britain and the army are asked to say how long it would take. That was at the time of the Czechoslovakian crisis, wasn't it? Ja, aber dieses Dokument ist, glaube ich, schon als eine Lächerlichkeit hier gebrandmarkt worden. Als die Arbeit eines kleinen Hauptmanns. He seems to have been very good judge at any rate, judging what happened afterwards. And now the next document, I know you were in Austria, but no doubt you heard about it from Kaipro, was the Chancellor meeting, the 23rd of May, 1939. That's L79. It's book number seven, page 275. And you remember there that the Führer said, the Dutch and Belgian air bases are to be occupied. Declarations of neutrality must be ignored. Considerations of right and wrong or treaties do not matter. The army will have to hold positions essential to the Navy and the Air Force. If Belgium and the Netherlands are successfully occupied and held, if France is also defeated, the fundamental conditions for a successful war against England will have been secured. <coughs> Daily attacks by the German Air Force will cut her lifeline. There wasn't any doubt as to the policy of the Führer in May 1939, was there? Ich habe von dieser Versammlung erst hier im Gericht gehört und von dem, was angeblich dort gesprochen worden ist, auch wenn es richtig ist, well now, kann es nicht beurteilen. Ich habe es nicht gehört, auch von Keitel nicht, auch später. Did you? Very good. Did you hear about the speech made by the Führer on the 22nd of August 1939, I don't know if the court have got this. It's not in the document book. I beg your pardon. 798 PS, it's in document book number four. There are some loose copies, my lord. 
Holland, Belgium and Scandinavia will defend their neutrality by all available means. England and France, England and France will not violate their neutrality. You always thought Hitler was a good prophet, didn't you? You thought Hitler was a good judge. And he was a good judge that England and France would keep their word, whereas Germany would break hers. Now then, that's, that's August. Now then, I want to come Kenne to that... Auch nicht. Very good. Now I want to come to the document which you put in yesterday. Oh, well, wait a minute. Uh, uh, defendant, uh, what did you mean by uh, you don't know that? You mean that, uh, that you didn't know the document? Ich kenne you said nicht, I don't know that. Ich kenne nicht, ich kenne nicht, was der Führer in dieser Besprechung am 22. August tatsächlich gesprochen hat. Ich wusste gar nicht, dass eine Besprechung war, denn ich war in Wien. Ich weiß nur, was angeblich darüber in Niederschriften hier uh, vorgelegt worden ist. L52, now, please. Now, I want to put the whole document, L52. Dr. Exner, quite properly, of course, read some extracts, but I want to read some more. You've got copies for the tribunal? Now, L52 was Hitler's memorandum on the 9th of October, 1939. May I point out that the 9th of October, 1939, was three days after his renewed assurances to the Western neutral. Now, I want to refer certain passages you've read. I want to refer to others. My Lord, I'm reading now from... Uh, it's the, starting with the outside page, it's the fifth page, and it's page 27 of the original, which appears in the bottom, the bottom right-hand corner. And I read the paragraph, it's on page 25 of your original witness. German possibilities in the event of a long war Germans' military means of waging a lengthier war are, as far as our main enemy is concerned, the Air Force and the U-boat arm. The U-boat can even today, if ruthlessly employed, be an extraordinary threat to England. The weaknesses of German U-boat warfare lie in the great distances to the scene of action in the extraordinary danger attached to these journeys and in the continuous threat to their home bases. That England has not for the moment laid the great minefields as in World War I between Norway and the Shetlands is possibly connected, provided the will to wage war exists at all, with a shortage of necessary barrage material. But if the war, war lasts long, an increasing difficulty to our U-boats must be reckoned with in the use of these only remaining inward and outward routes. The, the creation of U-boat strong points outside these constricted home bases would lead to an enormous increase in the striking power of this arm. 
Is that a covered reference to the Norwegian bases, do you think? Giving access to the Atlantic? Das glaube ich nicht. Das ist eine allgemein richtige, seestrategische Betrachtung und kann sich genauso gut auf den Stützpunkt Murmansk beziehen, den wir damals zum Beispiel schon hatten. Oder in Spanien oder irgendeinem damals neutralen Staat. Aber es ist kein Hinweis auf Norwegen, denn ich habe unter Eid ausgesagt, dass der Führer zu dieser Zeit mit keinem Gedanken an Norwegen gedacht hat, bevor nicht die Nachrichten von Brüsseln kamen. I, I, I hear your answer. Now may I go on reading? The German Air Force. The GAF cannot succeed in efficient operations against the industrial center of England and her south and southwest ports until it is no longer compelled to operate offensively from our present small North Sea coast by extremely devious routes involving long flights. If the Dutch-Belgian area were to fall into the hands of the English and the French, then the enemy air forces would be able to strike at the industrial part of Germany and would need to cover barely a six of the distance required by the German bomber to reach really important targets. If we were in possession of Holland, Belgium, or even the Straits of Dover, as jumping off bases for German aircraft, then without a doubt, Great Britain could be struck a mortal blow, even if the strongest reprisals were attempted. Such a shortening of air routes would be all the more important to Germany because of our difficulties in fuel. Every thousand kilograms of fuel saved not only an asset to our national economy but means that a thousand kilograms more of explosive can be carried in the aircraft. That is a thousand kilogram of fuel would become a thousand kilogram of bombs. This also leads to economy in aircraft, in mechanical wear and tear, and in valuable airmen's lives. Then I ask you to turn to your page 41. My Lord, it's three pages on, uh, two pages on. And your Lordship will see 41 at the, nearly at the top of the page with an asterisk. The heading, the German attack. Has your Lordship got it? The German attack. The German attack is to be mounted with the object of destroying the French army. But in any case, it must create a favorable initial situation, which is a prerequisite for a successful continuation of the war. In these circumstances, the only possible area of attack is the sector between Luxembourg in the south and Nijmegen in the north, excluding Lie. The object is to attempt to penetrate Luxembourg, Belgium and Holland in the shortest possible time and defeat the opposing Belgian, French, English forces. I suppose I can't ask you to say what your opinion of the honesty of giving those Western neutrals a guarantee on the 6th of October and that is the only possible means of attack in that memorandum of the 9th. I suppose that's a question of politics, is it? Das ist eine politische Frage, aber die Erklärungen sind immer nur abgegeben worden unter der Voraussetzung strengster Neutralität dieser Länder. 
Die ist aber nicht gehalten worden. Denn die britischen Flugzeuge sind täglich und nächtlich über dieses Gebiet geflogen. Why should, why should the wretched people of the Netherlands and Belgium be destroyed and mutilated because British airmen fly over their territory? Destroyed and mutilated by the German army. What's the, what's the logic of your, your remark at all? My Lord, there was one more passage from that document. Uh, if your Lordship is thinking of adjourning, perhaps I might read it and then I finished with the document. My Lord, it's the next page, and it's towards the end of the page. It's against the letter, the, 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 the lettering, uh, the number, page 52. Just above time of attack. It's on your page 52, witness, the very beginning. Or just at the end of page 51. All those in charge of impending operation must keep firmly fixed in their minds the fact that the destruction of the Anglo-French forces is the main objective, the attainment of which will attain, enable suitable conditions to obtain for later and successful employment of the German Air Force. The brutal employment of the German Air Force against the heart of the British will to resist, can and will follow at the given moment. Did that mean terror attacks against the civilian population? Sie befragen mich dauernd über ein Dokument, das vom ersten bis zum letzten Wort der Führer geschrieben hat, wie ich es Ihnen ausgesagt habe. Und bringen hier eine ganz interessante Darstellung über die Person des Führers als Feldherrn und Strategen für die Welt vom größten Interesse. Aber ich weiß nicht, was das zu mir, mit mir zu tun hat. Es sind das die Gedanken, die der Führer hier als Feldherr niedergelegt hat. Und für die ganzen Soldaten der Welt vom größten Interesse. Aber was hat es denn mit mir zu tun? Das verstehe ich nicht. May, well, may I point out, witness, that your own counsel produced it and you relied on certain parts of it. That's how it concerns you. You relied on it. We'll adjourn now. <coughs> Take a break, take a break, son. Recording that song before dinner.